<sighs> hey fellas, so earlier this afternoon I saw finally after all these months Pirates of the Caribbean and Demo Town Tales and it actually was not as bad had, uh, as many people would make it out to be. Starters, it's definitely better than the last movie they did. I was about that. I that. mean, given how it, I felt the story like, with long, a bit longer runtime, a little bit more, I also had one big one that on a story thread as well as a handful of characters to oh dear, well, as opposed to the whole oh, stuff in the last couple films, man. Especially the fourth one, man. While some people have mixed into the third one, and it's the fourth one always had an effect with me. And I can say that yeah, they would make a good template for this and for some of the effects with this. Forgive, forgive my mess here. For this planned live action version of One Piece, are working on in Japan, especially in how pretty all the action effects are. I mean, I'm glad Oats will get this important by now. So, the story this time revolves around, around a young man named Henry Turner, Turner, son of Will Turner, Turner, who's played again by and by Orlando Bloom in a, in a bit part, as well as Elizabeth Turner Swan. Played by Kieran in a bit part. I mean, he, along with a young woman and known as Karina Smith, if, if play, if I have a crew, Jack Sparrow, in order to find an artifact known as Poseidon, trying to Poseidon, which will grant whoever takes control of the seas, and Jack also wants to find it. And it to combat old enemy known as Captain Salazar, played by Javier Bardem. And even though his performance in this movie is not the same one man to it as was in No Country for Old Men, Bardem is still really good at playing villains, and as per usual, well, Jack, <laughs> Jack is such a delight to see. He would join up, even with a whole unpleasantness last year, as well as how this one got pushed back a couple of years because of how badly the little major bombed. I can say I'll take a quasi Keith Richards, who John Rome as one to human red face any day, but part of the parlance there, I mean. And uh, there was a lot, uh, also, in this being pretty fun, it also was relatively funny given how over the top of the scenes where they haven't had an opening action scene involved then trying to rob a bank, but they actually physically took the bank with them before they even took the vault, dragged it around town. And as well as the scene where he restores Black Pearl, apparently he, he just he had to add water like that like that salamander used to have, we put in a cup, it kept growing larger overnight. And so it actually took two director Hector's deal with the story this time. I'm and I'm and as a result, the film can definitely a seem at times a bit it's overblown, but overall I managed to I mean it's a similar case the last last movie where Apparently, Joaquin Ronnie and Espen Sandberg had this is their first major attempt at big budget action. Now they've been also doing smaller films, and but much like the hate the Disney animated it's based on, it definitely uh, it does offer a lot of some uh, cool visuals and some nice thrills for your money, money and overall it does make a fairly decent way to kill. Oh, two hours and thirty-three minutes. I mean, not counting tragic emotions. I'll get to that in a moment. And, and again, some of the effects for the ghost parts actually quite actually impressive, given how we have parts of them missing, but still being able to stand up. We have Styles in particular having his flesh decaying away, as you can see through the side of his head. His hair is wisping in the breeze. He's and also this black gunk coming out of his mouth. Like Penguin and Batman returns, and we will get to that. Don't worry. Right, and also, well, we've got, also I think Brendan Thwaites and Chaos Godelario, I mean, 
I mean, Scorpio is okay. Hey, I mean, in terms of acting, I mean, and it's not nearly as fun as how in the last movie, movie she dealt with, dealt with, 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 with Jack and then given how Penelope Cruz used to be married to Johnny Depp and and also with in the case of. He's a boy in three, however, he is a bit of a with Sam Claflin in terms of acting. He seems to more come off like a younger Orlando Bloom. And we actually could believe, theoretically, that he is well son. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm, these are technically not spoilers. There are other ones I'm not going to not gonna talk about. I mean, and, but if you are on me and still curious, you can watch a movie. I mean, I'm not sure what's coming out to you in Blu-ray, but by this point, maybe I want to see the movie I already have, and... I admit the summer has been kind of a bit of a hit less, less than less than the previous one was a couple were. Uh, I mean, and given how, and also this film in particular has actually made the least amount of money out of all of them. Um, just um, one hundred seven million domestically may seem a bit off, given how. Three hundred twenty million in the budget was eventually able to get that down to just a still a pretty high two hundred thirty million, but with seven hundred million, eighty one million worldwide, it still has a lot of, a lot of stuff can do. Especially with Blue Moon Day sales, that's that's one of them. As for anything else, I can think I can go either way. Hey, to be honest, because on one hand, and if they want to make other other um, other films from this point, it's definitely up for Disney John to decide that for themselves. On the other, it does make Hank a film that makes a good enough finale for the series since it did advertise as the final journey in sorts and overall, even though it's not my favorite entry of the series, that still remains the best one, the first one. It still draws enough for that film to make a good enough finale and I give it a good three out of four and I'm gonna talk about the trailers once the dogs quiet down, okay? Okay. Okay, and that's for some coming attractions. I'm not going in a particular order, Herder, her, but I ain't gonna address what I've seen in in during as previews, I mean so Valerian the City of Thousand Planets and it's even though that hasn't been doing too well, I'm still interested in it. And I mean, given how Luke Besson, the director, I have quite a bit of admiration for. And even though I haven't read the comic yet, I still am interested in it. In it. Uh, I mean, it's kind. Of, if I can best way to describe how it's being received right now, it's kind of similar to Jupiter Ascending, where critical reception has mixed at best. As in the box office, has been less than desirable, but got a bit of a cult following. Here, as well as doing better internationally, especially in France, where the comic books are from. Dunkirk looks excellent. I've heard it is. Definitely want to go to that soon. And again, and so far, Nolan has not made a bad film. Um, and definitely not any film I dislike or hate from him at all. Also, you can definitely expect I'm going to enjoy it. It's, I mean... And other blockbusters, there's a lot of them, but also Disney productions. I mean, I mean, all three that I saw were Marvel films. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean Black Panther looks really cool. I mean, all and also, I didn't get a chance to talk about this before, but but it's also. Another one for Thor Ragnarok, the Comic Con trailer. Halo looks excellent. Hands mean shot off more footage, detailing more of how Thor and Bruce Banner's relationship will go. And in addition to one of the Hulk, I mean, it kind of kind of stings a clunk there with tape for any single hero films. I'll probably address that when I view the Incredible Hulk, kind of view the script, and it. But Ruffalo, I think, is probably going to be a good performance to film, and really enjoying other ones, not only attorney ones like Idris Elba as Heimdall, as well as Tom Hiddleston as Loki, but also the comments as Cape Lynch as Hela, as well as Carl Urban as Scourge, I mean, Scourge, I mean, and on that note, 
Oh, I mean, how much we have? Another little bit. It's, I mean, I even kind of like the whole turn off your phone PSA or just silence it. It's I mean, and I saw before the film of Pirates and and that's kind of like a bit of a bonus on this that I'm, I'm dressing. And also, so another case, hey, so superhero film, oh, we have Justice League, that comic country as well. I mean, they're building up Superman's re-entrance into the series. I mean, so while some people have mixed feelings about the matter, I'm kind of liking that they're slowly building it up because of how they don't want to do the thing they do with General Justice. That's where they kind of reveal a bit too much. Much and much, and they also go for the definitely. They're actually just one guy that actually managed to put together all the previews and actually had a pretty good summary of the plot itself of the film before I even saw it. And I never would have guessed the first time I would see a glimpse of Clark would be like a Walmart at a school lab, but there we go. And I'm also potentially going to be rebooting Green Lantern Corps soon. I might do a Still can I'm not saying doing any visitings or those films I looked at before and I've done one last episode. And I plan on going, even though the same weekend the Ultra Sun Moon come out as well, and also probably because of Solidarity with Zach's daughter, as well as Whedon doing the reshoots and him taking a step back as a result. And I acknowledge that many decisions and these main storytellers are often been polarizing, but the spectacle is quite impressive. And I also kind of like not just seeing big names like Batman and Wonder Woman on there, but also The Flash, Ash, Aquaman, and Cyborg getting their time to shine as well. I mean, no, no. And last, in my opinion, least, Geostorm. It's a film that has. Been not promoted all that much, but I can actually see why now that I've actually seen the second full trailer of it because I mean, I honestly didn't know what was going on at all. I mean, apparently, this film is being made by Dean Devlin, who is one of MLX protege and often co and co producing all his films. And I can say, even though MLX is not involved, he might as well be given how he attempts to blend and action, comedy, political thrillers, science fiction, apocalypse, disaster films, I mean, it's really like elements from like a bunch of different movies with throwing them in a blender and just shard it out into a two and a half minute trailer, I mean, since, I mean, I honestly had no idea hey, what was going on, in fact, I actually think it's actually less cohesive than what actually is going on in this world right now, and that is saying something. In the age of infamous Kofi, if you'll pardon any any potential thing going on with that. I mean, look, Devlin, Michael Bay called. I think he wants to know why you're less cohesive than he is. Somehow, I mean, I mean, I was, I mean, I've actually seen the last night. I was only hesitant of that, but I don't see myself going out in October. It makes sense because there's a lot of horror films coming out that month and. Play Runner 2049 looks a lot, a lot more impressive to me. Heck, even the My Little Pony movie will be, be a better choice for my, for my taste. And, I, and I'm going to make it that I like that show. I'm going to catch up on Netflix. And and also, may even look at one of the Quartz Girls movie, movies to get ready. Just to the heck of it. I mean, I kind of like Heck, but still, I mean, I mean, it's a. I wonder how plot that Bailey Bass from Monster and Sorry Windows movie actually is a big budget release being a division of a major studio. What do you know what I mean? I mean, and even those are getting more fun with the it's probably a new Shark Data movie, movie or whatever. And, but I guess that's how things are, I mean, right now. And I definitely want to get some of the other stuff worked on, get it finished before. Or at the end of the year, hopefully. So I'm going to maybe have some of the slate clean of 2018, maybe. But as well, where I'll be then. And definitely be something to think about. And definitely think that whatever the case, case what Disney decides to do, who 
whether or not they want to make the new streaming service to actually break one from Netflix or just do it as it comes. And as for all the changes made to a ride, I can say that I don't really care about any of the subtext that was going on how my first went on. I mean, I was six years old, man. So I was a nostalgic fan, forgive me for saying, we want the redhead. And that'll be all for now. I got another video planned. I'll probably record in a minute or two. You should see it relatively soon. And so, drink up me hearties yo-ho. <laughs>